now we've got a pretty good time. Um, because the time involves uh, Mate, otherwise known as Muddy Puddle, of course. Uh, would you like to say hello to everyone, Mate? Hello, everyone. Indeed, yeah. So, Mate's here. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I mean, Mate's great all the time. Um, but today I felt uh, an especial wish to have Mate on because I was um, going over uh, some of my old streams. At the moment I'm just trying to format kind of ones that haven't been formatted into the proper stream format and are still private at the moment. And also delete ones that I don't want up there. Instead of having them private, I thought actually maybe it's best to just delete them, save YouTube the server space, etc. Probably just better for the environment, polar bears, money, all of that stuff. I don't need it up there. They don't need it up there either. Um, that change was inspired by a little documentary I watched about how, you know, the more stuff you upload, actually, the more harm you're doing to the environment because of the way that uh, servers are supported are still often by fossil fuels. So it's kind of a tenuous link, but, you know, I might as well not have all that stuff up there because it's going to have at least a little negative impact for no good reason. We've had uh, 15 bits, cheered by Greyboy03. I don't know, mate, if you are sort of better versed in um, understanding these sort of these these stock kind of Twitch emotes. You know what I mean? Like you know, there's Kappa and like Lull. Yeah. But like they're like the only ones I know the name of. Could you like give me a, a crash course in like any of the other ones if you know about them? Okay, mate, Pog Champ is when someone does Oh, sorry, yeah, of course, like... Pog. Uh, you know, the wide open mouth. Mm -hmm. Love Pog Champ, yeah. 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 A sort of like a an amazed, happy surprise. Yeah. Or a kind of oh, oh, like that, I guess, mm -hmm. is my understanding of Pog. Yeah. Um, in fact, I made There's, my. Um... Sorry, mate, I made my own version of uh, Pog uh, in the Discord server, which uses a character from the thick of it. We did a face that looked very much like Pog Champ, so I put that one in. That was all good fun. So yeah, we like Pog. Um, anyway, continue, mate. Sorry. There's Jabasis, which is what you do. Is what you say when someone gets Jabasis. I I I'm not familiar with that one, mate. Like um, if I was like, hey, mate. You're really great, but actually you're not. Haha, <laughs> Jabez. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I like how you you you, you do you you're brilliant, mate. You've done these demonstrations in chat as well. <laughs> yeah. Jabez. And then there's um. Basically, when there's something really boring, like this stream, <laughs> um, Resident Sleeper. There you go. <laughs> oh, I've seen that before, yeah, okay. <laughs> Surely that's me, you know, finally caught a reggae stream and he fell asleep live on stream. Yeah, um, yeah anyway, that... <laughs> thank you for giving me a, a short run through of them, mate. What about the yeah. the little, the little um, purple sort of like... Uh, cartoony character with a spanner or something. I'm gonna be honest, mate, I don't know most of them. Oh, okay. I only know a few of them. I'll try and find them again, just in case the name rings any bells. Uh, Vohio? What? No. Vohio? Vohio, yeah. I've not heard of that, mate. Yeah, that, well, Vohios were masquerading as bits earlier. There, Matt six or seven eights put one up in chat there, mate. Oh, okay. I don't know the relevance of that one, mate. No. Maybe Jack can explain it to you. Oh, that's a that's a good idea. Although I, you yeah. know, I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so sure, mate, because they usually ignore what I'm talking about and and talk about oh. Nekalugas mostly. I think. Anyway, uh, what is fantastic though is that we've just been cheered thirty five bits by Hungry Underscore Boy. Thank you to you. Wow. All individual bits. Look at that. I'm I'm glad I've got the um got the activity feed because I, I wouldn't want to count all of those bits. 
-hmm. And I'll probably miscount them, to be fair. So, mate, to continue what I was saying a while ago, uh, so I've been going through, like, the oldest streams, just trying to steadily format some of them uh, and put them back on the channel, uh, unprivate them, or I guess make them public. Uh, it would be a simpler way to say that with uh, the proper stream thumbnail, the completely lowercase title, etc. Um, and, well, I've I've done one of those. Um, so I don't know if you want to have a brief look at the channel, mate. If you want to look in the live streams oh. playlist. Oh, let's have a look. Um, playlist. Live streams. 243. Okay. Ah, yeah. Nice, mate. So what is that one there, mate? What's the... Oh, which one where? Oh, has it not come up yet? Uh, what's the latest stream in the playlist, mate? Oh, the latest stream. Thumbnail creation and low tide beach. Oh, okay, that's annoying. My my amazing example, it hasn't actually appeared yet. That that came off really well, didn't it? Is it at the bottom, maybe? Have I... Have... Video. Maybe it's more handsome brother takes over the stream. No, but, mate, actually, on that... um. Please keep looking in that playlist, sort of near the bottom. I believe there's, okay. well, I know there is, there's a stream in which you take over. Isn't that the Red Gets More Handsome Brother one? No, no, it's called Money Puddle Takes Over a Stream. Oh, yeah, I see it now, yeah, yeah. I actually used my, my brief, my, my Photoshop, while university isn't at university, we get it for free for a little period of time trial thing, uh, long name for it. To remove the background off your profile picture, mate. So it's just your head on there, which is pretty exciting. Right. I can, I can send you the the no background you if you like. Um, that would be great, actually. I don't, well, I don't know. I like the deep fried version I've got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could, uh, I I could no background that as well. To be fair, mate. There's there's no limits what we could do. Anyway, uh, it was my mistake. The video that I meant for you to discover wasn't actually put in that playlist yet so it should have appeared now in the meantime okay, not evan 17 has cheered 10 bits thank you what do you recommend no uh, gacha for bird manic i'm afraid i can't i wouldn't be able to do it with gacha probably ever again i'm quite bad what have you discovered team, mate i've discovered the team crying emoji origin story have you mate <laughs> yeah this is throwing me back do you wanna do you wanna read the description? <laughs> oh, one hundred likes and I'll release reg oh wait, wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one for Muddy Puddle takes over a stream or something? Yeah. <laughs> 100 yeah likes so and... 100, 100 likes and I'll release reg at ten thousand views and I'll start uploading on my channel again. <laughs> and it has two thousand six hundred views. Oh, if only, if only. I really, I, I don't have to. I it. really liked your videos, mate. No word of a lie, they were enjoyable. Okay, let's read this um, this description for the t the team crying emoji origin story. Okay, it says a dreadful escapade, but one I'll keep public as a reminder to myself to never become a to be never become a narcissistic. Psychophant. How is that even possible? Again, I'm not sure what a psychophant is. I like the attempt anyway. at that, mate. Uh, it's a sycophant. Uh, a sycophant. A sycophant. A sycophant. I've literally never heard. It's that, it sounds yeah, like. It kind of sounds like Heffalump from Winnie the Pooh, doesn't it? Um. Yeah. It, it uh, a sycophant is someone who's sort of <laughs> desperate for someone's attention and love. Basically, what I guess what we call a simp, right? Um, is a sycophant. Oh, okay, I see. Um, and... You should have said that, mate. Narcissistic simp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, I guess that, that would have had the, the same kind of um, desired effect. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, that, oh, that's... I can carry on reading. You can go, oh, carry on if you like, mate. Yeah, it tells the story a little okay. bit, I guess. It started with me and Eunice's Team 100, a parody of the equally ridiculous Team 10. Sensing fame, I did everything I could to get on it, exposing the fan base for attention and not even exceeding them. After that, I set up Team Crying Mode for all disaffected Team 100 hopefuls. <laughs> the server soon filled up with raids and chosen I deleted it to widespread derision. That 
as you can see from the rest of this sorry tale, was not what I deserved the derision for. I guess the one good thing that came out of this was the song I wrote. I remember <laughs> that being alright. Beat bloody poor, poor bloke, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the so the song. I mean, just a what second. Song, uh, mate? Co Coaster okay. Film YouTube has cheered ten bits. Thank you to you. Uh, what's our mate? What was the song, mate? I the song, mate. Vaguely remember. Yeah, you must do because I was watching. Uh, did you see my latest tweet, mate? Sorry to like send you on a merry-go-round around my social media. <laughs> no, that's fine, mate. I like looking at your social media. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I tried to tweet uh, not too often so that my tweets are valuable to. Uh, to yeah, read. Are. Thanks, mate. Ooh. Mostly. <laughs> mate once again. Especially. I've seen your um. Give it, give that video a watch, mate. It's it's you get, delivering an oh. I iconic takedown on David. Okay, let let's see. Let's listen. Like that. <laughs> Okay, you read my mind. Oh! <laughs> is, is that oh, my. Mate, you got roasted by Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It's true. <laughs> Ooh! Aben1234 oh, is hosting me. Thank you. Sorry, mate. Oh my! I just got such a massive throwback from that. Wasn't that great such time. a great time, right? I I was just. That was such a great time. It oh. it uh I I almost deleted that stream. I just but it said with the lads. I thought, oh, how many of the lads? And there were actually so many. I was like, wow, what a what a group of antics we had there. Mate, I mean, even Benjo I... saw was in it. I know, mate. I'm I'm retracing this, mate, and I'm gonna say um. <laughs> The good, the good old days. Weren't they just? Weren't they just? And anyway, I bring that up, uh, apart from it being just a great memory and, and something we need to try and replicate. Um, because you were singing the song that I wrote about Memulus during that stream. <laughs> so, you're going, I'm Reggae and I have to say, I'm a Memuluser all the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, do, this... Huh? Mate, huh? did I help you write that song? Possibly, mate. Uh, because it... I probably was inspired by something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just such a such a dreadful song, but it's it was it was somewhat fun, you know. It was. I need to find it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Not Evan seventeen cheers ten more bits and asks what should I use for bird manic? I mean, your best bet is to uh, look up tutorials, but you'll definitely want um, a Ruran cat, um, preferably like a, a red knockbacker. Anti-traitless would be good for the reindees. I the problem is with a manic. The only advice I can give sort of ends up relating itself back to Ubers. I'd really suggest looking at online tutorials for it. They are your they are your best bet because um, obviously they'll they'll have the how to do it all there and uh, suggestions in the description as well. You wanna you on a mission to find the 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 source of that song, mate? No, I mean, I searched reggae song and I found a Pixelite sing song. <laughs> <laughs> the Pixelite sing song. Oh, yeah. such antics. See, I remember the Pixelite oh, sing mate, song. Mate, the Latin time construction song. Latin time construction song. That is such an underrated video. Honestly, I am really happy <laughs> with that one. That I managed to get like Latin constructions into a proper kind of decent structure. Yeah. I was I was dead happy with that. That was that was some good stuff. The Latin time construction song, very nice. I don't I don't think I will be able to find your uh, meaningless. No, I'd be track be quite impressed if you did, mate, because I I certainly have no idea where it is. 
I'm searching Radio Diss Track now. <laughs> now, I, I see I see a Morgs video. <laughs> coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only that I was that popular, eh? Mm. Well, mm. Morgs. Popular. Anyway. Um... Yeah, those those were great times. Oh, and we got some more great times. Hungry boy, cheers a hundred pog champs apparently, uh, <laughs> and asks what's a good strategy for into the future chapter one moon. What is it, everybody? In unison in the chat, exclamation mark G U I D E. You will find a guide to that uh, level into the future chapter one moon on. My Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. There you go. There's Nightbot showing you the link. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the unison, everybody. That was that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> we love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, those those were such great times, mate. I'm gonna have to like filter through my other Overwatch streams see if we've uh, got any other great antics that we can unearth. But the plan is, and hopefully this is the plan, to uh, quit. The appetite of those of you who watch things other than Battle Cats or yearn for it, in fact. Um, <laughs> Thrilling Wednesday <laughs> is slated to be uh, an Overwatch streaming day. Oh. Which would be pretty exciting. I mean, you know, Mate and I were just playing a little bit of Overwatch to see if it was kind of viable and viable on my laptop and to get myself reacquainted with the game and uh mate did, did i not do some epic plays i can't remember to be honest oh mate i remember yeah yeah yeah. you uh were bull riding on the point yeah great, i i don't i don't quite know how i did it but i uh i got gold objective time mm, um by uh running in as lucio i managed to get up on a circular wall and then I just kept riding around the wall for like ninety percent of the battle. Uh, just I, I guess I would have been healing anybody who was around the point, and <laughs> enemies came into the point, and and they didn't hit me once. So whether they were just spellbound by the spectacle uh, of my amazing Lucio skills, I don't know. But uh, it was it was great fun indeed. Who do you main? Who do I main, mate? That's a that's a good question. Um, you main Lucio, mate. I probably main Lucio. Yeah, <laughs> Lucio is yeah. If if I was when I did comp, which I will never do again because it's the very worst side of Overwatch and actually the very worst side of humanity itself. Uh, I I would play Lucio. That would give me the best chance of getting to silver. Um, yeah. I I don't mind a bit of Moira though. Moira's all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Similar sort of, not too much aim needed. Quite easy to uh, keep yourself healed. All of that, you know. I mean, I guess you need a bit more aim for Moira's ult than you do for Lucio's. But, you know, here and there. So, uh, yeah, she's all right. I mean, any... who? Oh! Ah! Ah, 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 ah! DJ says he can play Farah quite well. Mate! What is my best DPS character? Is it May? No, I'm genuinely asking you, mate. Like, of the ones you've seen me oh. play, what do you think I'm best at? Because I'd say none of them. Well, yeah, I would kind of agree. But I think uh, <laughs> if I had to say one, it would probably have to be Junkrat, even though I don't remember ever seeing you play Junkrat. Yeah. Because you remember seeing remember. David playing Junkrat and insulting <laughs> David for it being a no-skill hero. That... Yeah. To be honest, actually, thinking about it, my best DPS hero is probably D.Va. Now, I know she's not DPS, <laughs> but I probably do more damage to people with D.Va than I do with any DPS hero, and I've got the benefit of uh, lots of health. So... I guess that would be the answer to that. I don't mind a bit of D.Va. That is, that is no aim joy. And not having to think about reloading either is quite nice. So, yeah. Just make sure you don't do the David style D.Va play. Oh, that was so funny. Was that, was that comp we were doing, mate? It might have been. It was some sort of at least semi-serious 
match and <laughs> and David was playing Diva. I was probably playing yeah. Lucille or something like that. And I, I was following Mate and the rest of the team towards the point. Mm -hmm. And and David, the tank who's you know supposed to be protecting us and our health, just goes in a completely different direction as a, as a flanking yeah. diva, leaving all of us to just get killed. <laughs> and he's just off gallivanting. Oh, it was oh such great fun. Great fun indeed it was. Oh yeah, it was um there there was some there were some definite antics really it was uh, it was very enjoyable. <laughs> I feel like reading its choices of heroes reflects his policy of why no Uber when you can Uber, but now it's why aim when you don't have to. <laughs> oh, that's that's very true. I uh, you know. I, I I wouldn't dream of uh, subjecting anyone to me playing McCree, but I have been sharpshooting with him a little bit in uh, in the practice area, you know. Now it only takes me about five shots to uh, hit the head of one of those robots, so I'm pretty good, basically. <laughs> no, I mean, I exaggerate. I can, you know, because I don't have to move around, I'm not getting shot at, I manage to usually hit them, but equally that's not saying very much, really. But there we go. Um, there, there were there were such great memories in Overwatch. The the antics we had. Did you see, mate, in that little video on Twitter that Sack Attack was in our group? Yeah, I just yeah. Wow, well, <laughs> huh? we really played with Sack Attack. Flipping Sack Attack for a little while, yeah. Yeah. Crikey, faster in the past that was. Still no idea who Sack Attack was or is. I don't even know if he still exists anymore. Oh, well, we had a six stack. I'm just looking now. Me, you, yeah. David, Ben, Gary, and Sack Attack. Yeah. Wait, and we have four DPS. <laughs> with David on... Oh, this was in quick play, I suppose. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, this is what I mean about, like, the lads. So they were just... Oh, a full group. It was, it was proper antics. Honestly. It was, I can't it... believe I was playing Hanzo. <laughs> oh dear, oh no, my cat fruit story just fell. Here we go. Jolt back to reality with my full cat fruit story. Oh, quite a lot of green and purple. That's. Uh... Nope. Grow. And. Wait for it. Grow. Okay. Why not do the old cat fruit whirlpool? I don't see any advantage in doing it. Because if you do the whirling, it doesn't tell you how many of each there are until you tap on them anyway. Which is basically exactly the same as using the menu. It's, which is why I suggested in the Dear Ponos it would be really easy to just have a numbers of cat fruit at the top of the cat fruit menu. And I really wish they were there, but it's just so much easier to just check your, your user rank menu, I think. Anyway. Yeah, so I, I sincerely look forward to uh, playing Overwatch with you again, mate. That was uh, on stream. It might be even more marvellous... Um, if we can get uh, David along too. Could you imagine that? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mate's like, it's just, please no, please no, please no. <laughs> <laughs> don't need that flanking diva <laughs> ruining his, his dreams. It's a fair point, DJ. I mean, to, to do the bit that I did after I checked my numbers of cat fruit, yes, the whirlpool would have uh, would have worked better for that. Um, but yeah, I I definitely I definitely do look forward to that. And I mean, my uh, my absence from Overwatch has certainly allowed me to grow a little fonder because I I definitely remember having had absolutely enough with it uh, when I stopped playing it. I even uh, watched a little bit of the Overwatch League recently. Enjoyed a little bit of that. 
Saw, uh, saw some funky heroes that I'm uh, not familiar with. And then I uh, looked oh, right. at... Yeah, so they were um, uh, some kind of middle-aged bloke and um, uh, Blueface. <laughs> I mean, I know both their names. I'm just trying to be awkward slash funny. Probably neither. Okay. But uh, <laughs> I saw one of them um, duplicate... Units slash alts oh. or something. That, that looked that looked yeah. relatively interesting. Um, a DPS though, so something I shall never be playing. There we go. Uh, it was interesting to see. Are you watching the Overwatch League, mate? I have been, yeah, mate. You know, mate. Next week will be a great time to tune into the Overwatch League because it's um, like a sort of like a tournament thing to see who the best team actually is. Except it's not the final. It's more like a a mid-season sort of thing. All right. Well, what are they doing at the moment, then, mate? So, currently they're going through the regular season, and um, right. there was a mid-season tournament which was planned, but unfortunately that was cancelled. Uh huh. So now they have two separate tournaments which are sort of replacing it, but every team will be in those tournaments. Just um, yeah. So it'll be good. All right. Stuff. That's the thing that confuses me about the Overwatch League, mate. It seems to go on for a long time, uh, and yeah. like a lot of it doesn't seem to be leading towards anything. It's not like qualifiers and quarterfinals and all of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean technically it does because it's like the top six teams go to the playoff, and then the next six teams for the last two spots in the playoffs. So right. it does mean something, but because there's so many matches, it just feels like each individual match doesn't really mean much. Oh, so they're sort of fighting each other several times over, and then it's sort of like how the the team with the most wins goes through yeah. to the playoffs first. All right. Yes, so each team plays each other like once or twice each. I see. Right. So I was, um, I saw the, uh, I was watching a game that had the, uh, what was it, the, what were the ones that people were memeing? Um... Vancouver Titans? Sorry? Vancouver Titans? No, 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 it was either um... Boston? Boston or Los Angeles, probably Boston. Um, and they, they were yeah. memeing them, and then they just decimated the other team. People were like, what? <laughs> What's going yeah, on here then? Yeah, I can't believe that happened. In fact, I was watching one, and I thought London Spitfire were the ones who won it or something, and they got decimated. Ah. So, like, the world order well, has it... just fallen apart. So, let me see. Did you... Yeah, the thing is, mate, London Spitfire, they dropped their entire team. Oh. Um... <laughs> and now they've got a completely different team of players that people haven't really heard of. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. What was the team that Muse Elk was in, mate? Because I remember he briefly made an appearance. That was just the World Cup, mate, on Team Australia, but that doesn't really mean much. Oh, that was a separate thing. I yeah. see, right. Oh, well, very exciting. So people in the chat were also memeing about Jake. Now, I don't really remember who Jake is particularly, but I do remember from the yeah, last time I watched... Me. Yeah, the last time I watched um, uh, Overwatch League, people were just... Filling the chat with <laughs> Jake is mad because he's bad, just over yeah. and over again. <laughs> that was a good meme. And a, a new one was like, spam this cake to give hope to Jake or something ridiculous. They just <laughs> wouldn't stop yeah. memeing him. Trish that always, always used to come up with awesome things to spam. I yeah. Can't miss it. <laughs> I mean,. They're, they're good rhymes. Uh, oh, yeah, because that's what really surprised me, mate. It was on YouTube, and I thought I, I always thought it was on Twitch. Yeah. I was getting my Twitch ready, and then, then I was like, why is it not on mm. here? And then I, I, I went, because I went to it via Overwatch, and then mm. it's the website said exclusively on YouTube Live. I thought, oh, that's a bit different. YouTube been shelling out the dosh to steal the Overwatch League, yeah, yeah. I presume. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. 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 
thing is, mate, it's caused there to be a lot less views this season than there have been before. Ah. Like, in the previous seasons, it was consistently at, like, 80k or so, or, like, 70k. But now really? I haven't seen it much yeah. above 20, mate. No, well, you'll find, mate, the matches in the morning will tend to be, um, yeah, quite low viewers. But I think yeah. the matches in the evenings are, like, 30 or 40k, usually. Still, though, that's only halfway there. Yeah, I know. Like, John Bon Jovi would not be particularly impressed. No. Or maybe he would. I don't know. Can't speak for him, obviously. But, um... Yeah, well, it's it's good to learn about these things, mate. Thank you for uh, informing yeah. me. Is it still going on tonight, mate? No, mate. It's uh, only Saturdays and Sundays. Is this it? Week, uh... Oh. Yeah. Well, this week it'll be uh, Friday. Oh right. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well. There we go. There we go. There we go, indeed. So, mate, I, I guess how have you been? Yeah, and no, I just I was gonna I was gonna qualify it a bit more, but why not just ask it more generally? Yeah, well, I've been good, mate. I um, I just had an exam today. An exam, mate. Oh, crikey. Yeah, I know, mate. I had to like uh, scan it over and like upload it to the thing and stuff. Rikey. The exam, I thought it went pretty well, um, and I've got another one tomorrow, and I think tomorrow's one's going to be pretty hard, mate, to be honest. Ooh, because it's like, it's yeah. like maths and that, isn't it, mate? Which, I mean, I, I think it's just yeah. impossible whichever way you cut it, so... Uh, oh, no, I've said whichever way you cut it, and if you cut it, you get fractions, and that's maths. You can't really escape from it, can you? <laughs> exactly, mate. You can't escape from maths, that's why. Oh. <laughs> Dread, dreadful, really dreadful. Yeah. Oh well. Um. I I hope you do well in the next one, mate. Thanks, mate. So do I. XD. I'm gonna continue a little trend that's only now becoming a trend. Actually, sure, scientifically only becomes a trend with three times, doesn't it? Okay. Well, a a a a, a, a wannabe trend. Um, a repetition. So someone had a had a maths test before. And uh, I asked, hashtag what's in the maths test? Uh, and I eventually found out the answer. So, mate, I'm, you know, aware that I won't understand what's going on, which is why your challenge is, hashtag oh, no. what's in the maths test, but explain it to me in a way that I can go, ah, I understand that, mate. Okay, mate, I'm going to explain to you something... Which is actually kind of... I'm going to explain to you what's called... Wait, what's it called? Oh, yeah. I'm going to explain to you. <laughs> I love that start, the... mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I love that start. It's like, yes, mate, I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to explain to you... Uh, What? What was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry for interrupting, mate. What was the name? Uh, okay, mate. The name is the Intermediate Value Theorem. Oh, is it where you just pick the middle number? Because I've already worked it out. There you go, I'm good at maths. <laughs> no, mate, what it is, mate... Shall I explain it in a mathsy way first, and then in a non mathsy way? Or just go straight it, into the non mathsy way? It, if it, explain it in the mathsy way first, mate, because if, if that helps you sort of work out then how yeah. you're going to explain it in the non mathsy way, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So, um, basically, mate, if you have... A function which is continuous and at one point at um at what wait oh yeah you've got the value of the function at point a and the value of function at b then for any number between those two values of the function, there will be a C between A and B, where F of C is that. Now I'll explain it in the non-massy way, mate. 
okay? Right. If you've got... I've actually thought about this, right? Oh, yeah? Um, so if you've got a chicken, <laughs> which at one point is on one side of the road... I love this. And at another point later, it's on the other side of the road. It must have at some point crossed the road. Oh, logic! I like that, mate. I like that. Okay, carry on. No, that's just it, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Why, it's a good joke, mate. Why did the chicken cross the road? Intermediate value theorem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of those jokes where you just condition to laugh. <laughs> there's there's nothing else you can do even if it's just not funny and i mean to be fair i thought it was a that was quite funny mate good job uh intermediate Thank value you, theorem well i didn't actually make up that joke that was one of my uh, lecturers he's a he's a right laugh mate that's good mate we like lecturers who are a right laugh he would, at the start of every lecture he would put up some dingbats oh classic yeah he would always be kind of funny Lucas the Fourth, uh, by the way, hi Lucas, asks, uh, "Are you like a visual learner?" No, I'm just bad at maths, so I I need I need everything explained to me in in a way that it doesn't have anything to do with maths. But I guess I guess in a little way I'm a visual learner. I'll give an example of why that actually relates to part of my own degree, which unfortunately contains what seems perilously close to maths and physics, which is pretty disgusting. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, um, uh, uh, I'm addressing this uh, to you, mate, because I don't know if anyone else knows, but I know you know. Uh, well, I mean, of course, lots of other people know. It's quite basic level. I'm just bad. Um, f formulas. We're like, this times this equals this. This divided by this equals this. And it's like rearranging the formula. Yeah. So, like, uh, I equals e times t is that right probably not i probably made that up sorry what <laughs> yeah uh, well that just goes to show right um no hang on let me let, let me do this properly um 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 um, um i'll get this i'll get this mate, mate hang on ah uh, for, force is pressure times area there you go that's one of them right okay so those sorts of things, and uh, the example where I, I sort of had to use them is, uh, uh, I can't remember now, something to do with frequency and wavelength, which just shows I probably need to revise it. Um, <laughs> I cannot uh, understand how to rearrange those without having one of those triangles where you cover over one of them and it tells you what the right. other things are. I, j I just... I have a complete mind block otherwise. So maybe I am in that respect a visual learner. Um, that and a little bit bad at anything that kind of has facts in it uh, that I can't just blag. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that, like those triangles are are my saviour in that respect because I, I really cannot yeah. cannot rearrange that stuff otherwise. Just complete. That's interesting, right? Because I always would look at those triangles in like those CGP books. And I would think, do people actually find this useful? But I guess you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid to break to you, mate. There are people who are that stupid. <laughs> oh, bonjour. Je suis here. Yeah. But, yeah, genuinely, like, I I just... Because I, I will just doubt myself. That and just not understanding how to do it. Of Like, what I move up, what I times by what, what I... Uh, divide by what to get the one that was say on the bottom of the fraction the uh, the, dom the dominator brilliant um to the other side of the equals i wouldn't know if i was doing it right unless i had that triangle so lucas says so like f equals p times a you can't visualize re rearranging it to f divided by a equals p um no um other than like remembering it is a phrase forced uh Pressure is force over area. Um, no, because I, I well, not because I just can't do it. But like, if you have F at the top of a triangle, uh, and then P and A in the bottom sections of the triangle, uh, then if you ask me what P was, I could cover over the P, and it's F over A. 
I understand that that's fine. But ask me to do it without a triangle, and well, I'd have to visualize a triangle. I wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. But this sort of swelling music, I feel like I'm sort of admitting to a kind of deep dark secret of how truly bad at all this stuff I am. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, this intermediate value theory, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued yeah. because. What you've explained it's so just... far is 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 kind of a, a very nice kind of logical um, necessity, right? Yeah. And, and I like that. That, but that I like. That's the sort of thing I might end up using well, at, in an argument. So, mate, where, that's just analysis. Where? What? Yeah, they say that, don't they? Because philosophical logic does have a crossover with maths. I mean, when it gets to maths, obviously, I I, I struggle again. But there is. There is uh, some of that stuff. Um, some crossover there, definitely. Sort of like analytical logic is is proofs, yeah. really, isn't it? Which is the thing that you do yeah. in maths, albeit more mathematically. But yeah, I guess in, in that respect, there is a bit of a crossover. And like logical thought, I, I can usually deal with that. But then if it's like logic gates or maths, I can't deal with that. And suddenly that's that's just a brick wall. Mm. Uh, Penguins Gamer, cheers 10 bits, said, I believe the French word here is ici. Yeah, it is ici. I, I, actually, that was something I should really have remembered. Je suis ici. I didn't even need to say je suis here. Could have gone. No. <laughs> uh, bonjour, je suis ici. Uh, malheureusement, uh, XD, XD. No. Uh, hang on. Um, ha ha ha. The French for ha is still probably ha. Ha ha ha. There you go. Um, well, they can't say ah, can they? We'll be ah, ah, ah. L'hotel, l'hotel. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to make any assumptions as to whether French people can say ha, ha, ha. Probably can. Um, But anyway, Penguins wishes us. Good luck on Heavenly Tower. Thank you. Uh, Do you play Pokemon? I do not. I mean, I played Pokemon Go briefly. Uh, in the sort of um, the kind of uh, brief period of its massive popularity. In fact, on that, mate, do you remember, other than the 21st night of September, of course, Pokemon mm -hmm. Wednesdays? Pokemon Wednesdays? Pokemon it, Wednesdays. Do you remember See, that? Yeah, I hadn't remembered that we did it specifically on Wednesdays, but now you mention it. Pokemon Wednesdays. But you remember it now. There, I there, kind of do, I think. There was a brief time, I tell the chat in story mode here, uh, that after school, uh, mate, I, and another person who will remain unnamed <laughs> uh, went they have to? into the general area. Uh, I don't know, mate. Who knows? You know, Anonymity is good, though, I think. You know. I mean, okay. it's, unli it's unlikely that they don't want to be named, but just in case they don't. Okay. Um, maybe they'd be mortally embarrassed that they once did Pokemon <laughs> Wednesdays, and they've got all their friends gathered round. Like, they've, they've, they've got out of them already that someone they used to know is, like, a terrible YouTuber. Um, and the last thing that they want now is to be embarrassed further by the uh, revelation about Pokemon Wednesdays. So, yeah. Though, actually, my example doesn't work at all, because if they worked out the thing about the YouTube, and I was talking about them having been found out as having the friend who was a terrible YouTuber, <laughs> they'd know that they were the person I was talking about with the Pokemon Wednesdays. So, you know, they, they would still be mortally embarrassed. That's a, I've, yeah. I've broken my own logic problem there. Oh, well. <laughs> um, the point is... Uh, Mate, this person and I uh, would go out in the area around school, spelt with a K, because uh, we were cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'd go hunting, I believe, uh, mostly around there for uh, Dragonairs, wasn't it, mate? Oh, now you mention it, yeah. Because they were quite valuable, and, you know, that, that, that was, like, where they were meant to be found. So uh, we went and had a little look. 
And so to think how much of my life I spent trying to find electronic things on Pokemon Go is madness. Especially after whole miserable days of, uh, of the school. But then again, this is probably just a kind of slightly ill-advised way that I'm thinking about it now. Because actually, I was probably glad to be doing that. And I'm all now about, like, you know, maximising the, the usefulness of my time. But I, I, I end up sounding kind of less happy. So maybe I just need to not use my time particularly wisely again. And maybe yeah. maybe I'd sound happier. I don't know. That's something I guess I'll have to go on a voyage of discovery about. But we um, yeah. we did indeed do those uh, those Pokemon Wednesdays. And uh, I'd always end up in a place I, I had no idea where I was. And was to get a bus I didn't know. <laughs> um so, you know, it was there there were certainly some antics and it wasn't without its sense of trepidation and danger. Yeah. Uh I remember once we uh, we just stopped and and sat on a street corner with no bench for ages just battling a gym. That's how dedicated we were. Really? I didn't even think we we beat the gym. Uh, so it was a waste of time. Anyway. I don't even remember mate, honestly. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, mate, it was uh it was a good while ago. It was yeah. back in the... All right, gentlemen, a long view back to the past, as they say. Quite a long time ago, indeed. So, yeah, that, that was with that. But, ah, yes, right, good. I remember what I led off of to start talking about that. And I, I don't know how I got there, but I remember what I was talking about originally. Right. right. So, intermediate value theory, mate. Okay. I, I can understand that from, from a point of view of, as like a, a logical necessity. And I, I appreciate the kind of philosophicalness of that. Mm. What is the mathsy bit of it that turns it from something I quite like the idea of to something I couldn't possibly hope to understand? It's just the... Um, it's all, maths is all about like going from the basics and then proving more and more complicated things that you just don't understand at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where do functions come into it, mate? Because I must admit, you know, functions were, unfortunately, uh, a, a part of the spec for GCSE, and I I never, never understood them. And, you know, actually, when there was F in a bracket, I'd, I'd write letters after that F in a bracket to spell rude words, uh, quite often um and and that was that was about as far as i got with functions uh, what have the functions got to do with it but possibly first mate what mm -hmm. are functions oh god right well mate functions you've got like your domain and you've got your codomain and a function you know mate this is literally semester one algebra, mate. <laughs> semester um, one. It's like, yeah, it, ma it maps elements of the domain to another element in the codomain. Is it is it incorrect that I'm just thinking of computers at the moment, mate? When I hear domain. Oh, that's, a different, that's not incorrect, mate. That's just a different type of function. Oh. Oh. I I actually kind of hope that you just say that was wrong because that's just made it more complicated. <laughs> uh, no, I mean. Uh... Um, so, right? <laughs> Could you possibly <laughs> simplify it down even more than domain and codomain? A function takes an input and gives you an output. Ah, I like that, mate. Like a number machine. Yeah. I can do number machines. I did them in primary school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, start with number machine, that's that's fine by me. Okay. Yeah. I mean that yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay. What, what exactly do you want me to say, mate? So well like We'll build on that. But build on the number machine yeah, to get what a function is. to get back to the Domain and codomain thing, but like in a way that is built on my oh, right. very basic understanding. A domain, mate, is the set of things that can be inputs. 
Oh, I like that, mate. Oh, hang on. I'm going to try and relate this to something I learnt about. Because added to our GCSE spec were sets. And you had different Ooh. squiggles denoting, like, what was within that set. So I guess the domain is kind of like that. The the, the things that are yeah, within yeah. that that set. Okay, Lucas asks, and this is brilliant. What the heck is a number machine? It shows how people are just taught <laughs> taught differently in different places. I mean, Lucas is probably taught with like actual facts, and people just like dumbing it down as far as they could for me, to, with a hope of me understanding it. Um, a number machine uh, is drawn as a sort of conveyor belt that goes into a box. Then on the box is written a function. Oh, a function! That their functions. Oh, oh, I see their functions as well. Right. Okay. Revelatory moment. On the box yeah. is written a function, which could be something as simple as something I understand, like times by two. So the conveyor belt moves in um, the number one. Uh, it goes into that times two box. And when it comes out on the conveyor belt, the other side of the box, it's the number two. A number five goes in, goes in the box, comes out as a number ten. And those are the idea of number machines applying functions mm. to numbers. And that what? Their functions, mate. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I feel with this music again like I'm at the end of a documentary of like the really uplifting moment where everybody's suddenly in harmony. That's amazing. I'm gonna live my yeah. life entirely differently. Please continue, mate. Wait, what do you want me to say, mate? What? Well, just continue building on what you were building on. You got functions. Yeah. Do you want me to explain functions specifically? Or... Yeah. Okay, I thought I already did that. I well, I just feel like we've got a bit more to uh, go, surely. Unless that's it, like the the stuff that can go into the number machine is the domain. Yes, exactly. What's the co-domain then, mate? That's the stuff that can come out of it. Oh, I'm liking this, mate. I'm genuinely yeah. smiling at maths. There are there are there are weird things happening here. Smiling at maths. I cannot quite believe it. Okay. Mate. Yeah. You would like semester one algebra and analysis. You would, mate. <laughs> mate, maybe I would, mate. Um. <laughs> Maybe I probably shouldn't take that though. Let's be fair. Um, I might, I might be all right with a, with a very first lecture. I'm like, oh, is it like number machines? And they're like, yeah. You're a bit stupid, aren't you? <laughs> um, okay. So, how do these domains and codomains, mate, uh, map onto intermediate value theory? Wait, did I say it right? intermediate value theory? Is that right? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, mate, that's just one specific theorem that I just thought would be kind of cool to explain to you because there would be like a cool, simple explanation. It was cool and simple, mate. You succeeded there. So, like, the, my question, I guess, is why... Uh, well, what, what, what do the functions represent here? What's going into the number machines, like... I know it, it's a domain that's like a set of things that can go into it, but what what defines the domain, if you know what I mean, in, in the case of each of the functions here? And while you try and brew up a simple enough answer to that, Lucas says, okay. maths are good. Why do you think I'd look up a bunch of numbers and stats in Battle Cats? Well, it's true. Lucas finds out like really, really useful stuff. And I found mm. looking up data and crunching that for uh, the Worker Cat video beneficial as well. I'm not lying that math not lying. Ah, you won't find me lying. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not denying. There we go. That maths can be useful. I just am bad at it, and kind of object to the idea of it being called maths once you get to the point where there aren't any numbers in it anymore. Mm. Right, mate. Have oh, you managed boy. to? Okay. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, if you think about two particular numbers, let's say you've got two and five, and you put those in your number machine, right? 
Love that you're still using Number Machine. Thank you, mate. Yeah. And now times two is what we call a continuous function. So, like, it stays the same? Um, continuous means you can draw it without lifting your pen off the paper. It's just one continuous line. You don't have to. Yeah. So, oh, I guess... So you wouldn't call that linear because a continuous function could also be like a parabola. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I understand that. So like, now this is like proper like weird math stuff, right? That I luckily didn't have to deal with. What would cause you to have to lift your pen off and draw like parallel lines on a graph? What kind of y equals mx plus c would you even need for that? Ah, uh, well, not the sort of functions you're thinking of, mate. So, here's the thing. You can... The, the thing you need to understand about functions, mate, yeah. is that you can like define them however you like. It doesn't have to be y equals mx plus c. It doesn't have to be, like... It doesn't have to be, um, like, a quadratic or anything. Uh-huh. You, you can have a function, like, if x is negative, then f of x is zero. If x is positive, then f of x is one. That could be your function. Okay. And so that, it's sort of like yeah. rules in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly, mate. Oh, excellent. Another comparison point. And that would be a, a function that isn't continuous, mate. Because your pen would be going along, and then when you get to zero, the value of the function suddenly jumps from zero up to one. And then you have to go. Oh, like a like a set of stairs, but the step isn't connected. Yeah, exactly, mate. Ah. Exactly, mate. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what con con continuous function is. That's so, yeah, brilliant, if mate. Have, if you have a function which is continuous, then say you put the number two in and the number five in. Yeah. Then you would guess out if your function was multiplying by two. Then you guess out the numbers 4 and 10. Yeah. And the intermediate value theorem says that if you put a number between 4 and 10, for example, 6, then you will be able to find a number between 2 and 5, where, multi where multiplying it by 2 would get you 6. Because the function is continuous, it allows that to be the fact. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Ah. So I guess with the chicken across the road thing, the, the 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 there being a continuous function is like accepting that there are rules of how our space and time kind of normally work. Yeah. I mean that's 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 pretty brilliant, mate. To be honest, what what you've just managed to do there is is allow me, like person who really struggled with GCSE maths, and laughed openly laughed when people talked about A level or even AS maths. Um, understand a university topic that you've been doing. I would like to commend you for that, mate. Thank you ever so much. I think that's the first time I've been even remotely successful. So, yeah. there, there have been, there have been some, some attempts mired in my lack of understanding before. That is true. This time though, you've done sublimely well. I think you should become one of those online educators. I mean, there's definitely a market for it in these times. If you think about it, mate. Hmm. In fact, if you want to like record yourself talking about intermediate number theory, intermediate value theory, mate, that, I'll, I'll that make. So good, mate, honestly. Sorry. I just, I just explained to you like all the boring stuff. Analysis is boring, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how you're going to start your videos again, mate. Intermediate value theory. Theorem. It's a theorem, the mate. Oh, because it. Is a theorem, like, more definitely true? Like, what is the difference? Um, to be honest, I get confused by this. Hmm. But, like, you've got 
you got proposition. I don't know what that is. Oh, propositional um, knowledge, mate. I guess that's 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 a bit of philosophy there. Propositional knowledge is um, uh, well, what we consider as like facts. Um, a hill over a thousand feet tall is a mountain. That's propositional knowledge. And then there's uh, ability knowledge, which is I know how to ride a bike. Uh, and yeah. then there's another type of knowledge. Um, and I can't remember what it is because I'm bad. <laughs> so what you have, mate, is you have lemmas, which are like, they're not that interesting, but they kind of lead to something which maybe is kind of interesting and important. And then you've got theorems, which are really important. And then you have corollaries, which are sort of like... <gasps> <lots> corollaries! Of... <laughs> that means continuation yeah. in logic. We have those in philosophy, yeah. mate. I'm sensing a... Yeah. I'm sensing a beautiful crossover there. That is beautiful. Can yeah. I tell you about a, a corollary I, I quite enjoyed uh, which, before I have to go, because I suspect yeah. I have to go now. So, um, the ontological argument is, an, and I remember there's a stream actually, yeah. somewhere in the archives called the onto not so logical argument, where I probably talked about <laughs> this before, because I, I think it's a terrible argument. Anyway, the ontological argument uh, says that it can prove um, God exists, basically because God is the greatest possible being in, in one version of the argument, Anselm's. Another one says that it, they're, they're basically based on the idea that God is so brilliant that God is necessary, and so that's part of their argument. Well, God's necessary. God must be there. Um, and... Anselm's version of the argument said that God is the greatest being imaginable. And then another premise of the argument, the premise is being the steps in the argument, uh, said that something which exists in reality, something that is really there, is something is better than something that's just in your mind. So the example I would always use back when I was lonely and didn't have this sort of blissful, un non caring about it anymore calm. Uh, a girlfriend who exists in my mind is not going to be as good as a girlfriend in reality. And so it's that kind of idea, that if it exists in reality, it's better. Your dream house, maybe it's a nice idea in your head, but much better if it exists in reality. And if God is to be the greatest possible being, there can't be anything making him slightly less good than he could possibly be. Uh, so God must exist to be the greatest possible. Otherwise, there'd be something that he lacked existence to make him better. Yeah. And so, the no devil corollary uses that logic and continues it to basically take the mick out of the ontological argument. It says, right, okay. the devil is the worst <laughs> possible being imaginable, because that is the foundation of yeah. the Christian belief in God and the devil. God is the best possible, devil is the worst possible. Now, Anselm said that something is not as good if it doesn't exist. Something is better if it does exist. So the no devil corollary uses that logic and says, if the devil is the worst possible being, it can't exist. Because if it was to be existent, if it existed, it would be slightly better than if it didn't exist. So therefore, to be the worst possible being, the devil can't exist. And so, using Anselm's logic, and the argument that, that you'd have back at that is that, well, you'd flip it round and the devil is worse if he exists because he's the devil and he does bad things. But if you're using exactly the same logic, for, to be the worst possible being, the devil must not exist. And that's also known as a reductio ad absurdum reducing to absurdity, making the argument just showing that using that logic you can prove something that obviously isn't true to be true, which then throws the argument into a dustbin, basically. Uh, and yeah, yeah that, I'm quite fond of the no devil corollary. And I think that's, that's a beautiful way to end the stream there, mate, where a bit of understanding that I managed to glean of your mathematics crossed over with a part of my philosophy A-level that I did 
And I mean, what a beautiful moment. Thank you so much for that, mate. Well, I think it's going to be a lovely Thank place to end. Yes, thank you indeed. And hopefully if we can arrange it and get it done and get it sorted. We'll be streaming some Overwatch on Thrilling oh Wednesday. Boy. Goodbye, everyone. And thank you, Purple Camel, for the 15 bits. <laughs> you want to say goodbye, mate? Goodbye, mate. <laughs> Every time. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>